special air service, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Uh, and, and so he said, shitty ass service. Yeah, I don't shit- know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever they are, they, they think they're the baddest on the planet. Like, yeah. uh, we make the Navy SEALs look yeah. like a bunch of Girl Scouts. My <laughs> sons were gunned down by sass. <laughs> but he, he says, listen, <laughs> my son's got served. Yeah, and he calls, and he calls specifically, uh, Danny and Jason St- uh, St- Statham's character. And he's like, uh, listen, uh, you know, you're gonna do this job, and Danny, and Danny says, you know, I'm, I'm done, man. I don't do this. I killing is just not for me anymore. I want to live a normal life. And he's like, well, you know, that's that's cool. Go ahead and walk. Oh, wait a minute, we got your friend Hunter back here. We're gonna kill him if you don't do this job. And so Danny's like, fuck, you know. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> so he he is uh, pulled back in to hunt down specific members. I think they mentioned like. Three targets that this Sultan or this Jafar, whatever his name is, the, the, the Iron Sheik. <laughs> it, 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 the, the, the setup for it, I was like, "Come on, you guys!" It's like, "All right, here's what you got to do. You gotta, you gotta hunt these guys down. Uh, you gotta film them confessing that, that what they did." Then you got to kill him and make it look like an accident. <laughs> it's like, are you fucking kidding me? It's, it's funny because at that point I was like, you know, it'd be a lot easier to just shoot these guys and take Robert De Niro yeah, back. Yeah. But then when he tries it, it turns out it's not so easy. See, see, I, see, I thought it'd be a lot easier for them to hire that fucking puppet that likes riding riding around on that tricycle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Have, have them confess, film that shit, and yeah, make a movie out. And that chick is like, yeah, and I want to do the single song and juggle at the end of every video. <laughs> God damn, man. Come on. <laughs> and wear this dress when you do it. Yeah. Fuck, man. Come on. This is bullshit. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Or rollerblades. All right. God damn you. Yeah. No, but you know, um, so he says, yeah, three specific targets I want you to go after. So he goes after them. And then he realizes it's not so easy because, of course, it's never, you know, one guy watching you do this. There's several people in a big job like this watching you, including uh, Clive Owen, who these are people that he's worked with. These are people that are close to his organization. And he goes after these mercenaries that are, that are killing these targets. So it's you have this kind of plot where you are doing a lot of globe trotting, you you're dealing with a lot of espionage, a lot of double crossing and in there that story once I was piecing it all together midway through I was like I'm into this. I like this. I I I this has all the elements of classic spy thrillers you know th- even though these guys aren't spies uh it, it has that element in there and when they bring in ply i mean uh jason statham just to come in and do you know his routine action stuff i'm his like stick. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah his stick. Yeah, you know it's like come on man this is this yeah. is kind of getting in the way of what could have been a really cool story here that, that that's just easily me. no no you're right easily uh, and and you know the thing is they try to give him some dimension by making him the killer with a conscience where you're like all right that's that's that, that kind of always wins me over sometimes but Okay, but they, you keep, they keep bringing it up, but for no real good reason. Well, see, now, I, I got to say that normally that's the thing that pisses me off. Because early on, he's on a job, and it's like he doesn't take the target down because a kid is watching. And I will immediately hate a movie when they do that. I'm like, you're going to be a killer. Oh, you, know, you kill the kid's dad, but the kid, you're like, I can't do this. But they do follow through on it in that you, you, get, you get the sense that, like, he's just been done with killing for a while. It's like, yeah, he was good at it for now. But before, he's like... Wow, I am really not digging this, and I, I just don't want to kill. Like, like it's not just because it's a kid. It's just like I don't want to kill any innocent people. Of course, he's working with a bunch of guys yeah. who like, hey, fuck that. Yeah, people. I know. Yeah, we, and it's, we it's got like, work to do. It's like how long have you been doing this job to where you haven't gotten over this? Because you're you're right. I mean, when I see something like that, I'm, it is like you know, at least to me, at least I'm like, okay, it's Jason Statham. You're giving me something to to give a shit about this. I I guess I it, I get what I can take, you know. And watching this, it, I was like, okay, uh, I, I can already see where this is going to head. Because you're right. It, when, once they introduce simple like simple characterizations like that, you kind of already know what you're gonna get, what you're gonna get yourself into. Because my biggest problem with these movies is once again. They have a girlfriend there waiting, w- waiting in the wings for for Jason Statham, just so at some point she can get captured or get threatened. That, a- and then that, that is, is so that true, is a man. motivation that drives Jason Statham to go get revenge on him. It is always a chick <laughs> yeah. that he has to go back to. Yeah, yeah. it's always this one chick. Is like, dude, you've done this before a billion times. Leave the girls alone. And it, you know? and it's <laughs> always with these chicks. They're like. Yeah. 
where are you going? What are you doing? I yeah. can't tell you. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. Same it was, shit. It was, it was wow. Did, 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 did I come back from the bathroom and, and walk into the expendables? Yeah. I, wait, what yeah. happened there? Yeah. Strange is a bit of an exotic thing around here. Oh, come on, I didn't think I was a stranger. Oh, but you're still exotic. Danny, something tells me you've got a story to tell. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would just like, for once, I like for them to change it up. You know, have it yeah. be, you know, your little brother. Have it be the dog you yeah. got to come back to. Or just to, don't you even know? introduce the character because honestly, this movie didn't need that. It didn't need it. Yeah, and this, and it, and it, the, you know, and granted, the only thing believable about that is that every chick that he's with is a, is a chick worth killing for, <laughs> worth going back home. Yeah, I think I the chick here is called. Odd. His, uh, it's Yvonne Strahowski. Or, yeah, exactly. Because she, uh, she's uh, Sarah on Chuck, where she plays a spy herself. You know, she's an action star, and yet. She does no action in this at all. I, I just thought, wow, why would you hire her? Yeah, she her? does. She lifts a bell of hay and throws it in the back of a truck. <laughs> yeah. That's an action she's, pack. Man. Yeah, she's doing more manly work than anybody else in the movie. <laughs> I mean, clearly. She's like I, building a barn or something, right? <laughs> clearly, I like this movie better than you guys, but I, I can't, I can't you know, like overlook failings like that where it's like, wow, you wrote this female in here. With nothing for her to do other no. than just be, just be, you know, uh, damsel a hostage, in distress. A da- yeah. damsel in distress. Yeah. I mean, and I understand the need to like say, hey, hey, this is why this guy's different. You know, he's he's trying to be more human. He, we want to give him a reason to fight for to to want to stay alive. But you know, actually put some work into it. You know, I mean, write, write her as a full person. Now, you know what I will say that it's this is a good thing and a bad thing. Rob De Niro and Jason Statham, when they're on screen together. I that's what really pulled me in kind yeah, of midway. I was like they they have they have great chemistry together. It's just too bad that Rob De Niro came to shoot for this film for only ten days and is in the movie for ten minutes. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's hardly he, which he is, is a big tragedy in my book. He, no, he is hardly there. The other person I like is Clive Bowen. The rivalry are this whole relationship that uh, Jason Statham and Clive Bowen have going on. I mean. You know, they're pretty much spy versus spy in this movie right here. You know, I got to say about Clive Owen's character, what I liked is how he's not really a good guy. Not not ever. I mean, you you might – there's going to be a point when you stop rooting against him. But, you know, uh, and even like in so many movies like this, it'd be a point where it's like, okay, now these these guys, they have a common goal and they're going to be buddies and work together. And it's like, no, not really. They, they're like, you know, enemies today. Well, that's, that is, that's what makes this movie – this is a very cool part about the film. In the trailer, it's misleading too, because in the trailer, they tried to make Clyde Bowen seem like he is the bad guy from the beginning of this film, and he's the one that Rob De Niro and Jason Statham have to go after, and that, that is not the case here. This, this is a guy who has been pulled into a pond, into this big game. He's played for a sucker in some yeah. cases, <laughs> and he just doesn't get it. He just doesn't stop because, for better or for worse, usually for worse, because he's just kind of getting dumb after a point, but I, I kind of, still, I like that, he has a code. I mean, this is a guy that has also served in the SAS. He's out to pretty much protect the organization, avenge his, his fallen brothers. And that's a code that he's sticking by no matter what. I mean, up to the very end, they're just kind of like, man, will you stop? And he's like, <laughs> and, he, and he's still like, no. You see this here? You see this here? I brought my code. <laughs> and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> and you know what? He He's the one that brings the biggest complexity to this whole thing. I mean, when the job starts to get messy, that's when I like the movie too, because he's the one introducing the mess. But he's bringing yeah, the mess true. in. That's yeah. even a point in the movie. Somebody's like, "Man, this could have been so much easier." But this guy's in the way, <laughs> yeah. you know. And, 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 well, normally in a, in a situation like this, you have your guys who are the the, the team of assassins, and they got to take out the targets. And the only thing they ever have to worry about are henchmen. It's just a matter of getting around the henchmen or whoever bystanders walking away. But here. You know, your main guys, they got some guys on them, and these guys are competent. You know, they're, they're a genuine threat. So it's like, wow, not only do we have to pull off the impossible, but we got these guys on, on our ass, and they're just about as good as we are. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's, I'm not saying this is a bad film at all. I would say, like, like I said, about halfway through, when I started, like, really understanding the characters, not even the story, when I understood these characters a little bit better because they finally slowed down enough to build on them, especially Claude Bowen's character, I was like, this is, uh, this is a little more complex than I thought. This is a lot smarter than I thought it would be. It's just too bad that it's coming an hour too late for me, 
and even what I'm getting in the second hour is interrupted by not bad scenes of action. It just didn't seem to fit within the story itself. I, I was like, you know, either you're going to go shallow or you're going to go deep. You know, together it's not working. You know, I would uh, I would say that if uh, you want to go watch this as an action film, I, I and, and you know that, <laughs> you know, you're not going to get a very deep story, at least for the first beginning of the movie. I, I think it would work for you, if, but if, if you're like me, who has seen you know every action film out there just about, and especially have seen every Jason Statham action film out there, this is not Jason Statham at his best. I mean, at right now, Jason Statham in this mode, where you know he's gonna come in all stone faced, he works better against something that's highly exaggerated, high, you know, just something that's crazy. This is kind of tame, and you know. By those means, this is just uh, uh, this is just a rental, you know, average rental for me. Uh, I, you know, I I can certainly see where you guys are coming from because on, on one hand, you look at it you're like, well, as a as a you know an intense spy thriller, it's got too much of the Jason Statham uh, super action in it, and as a Jason Statham super action movie, okay, it doesn't have enough of the craziness and the super action. This, uh, and so you know, if you're in either one of those camps, it's going to be unfulfilling for you. I tend to be right there in the middle where I like the fact that it has some of A and some of B and, and they, they mix together well for me where I'm like, wow, here's a Jason Statham movie where I don't feel like just turning my brain off and letting somebody tell me, you know, what happened. I, I, I got into it. I, I like the complexity of it. Um, and I struggled with how I felt about the length because it's two hours and it's, I'm like, is it bugging me just because I'm just like, I just feel like no Jason Statham movie should be that long. I'm sorry. Uh, but I'm like, you know what? To cut it down would cut out some of those plot elements that I enjoyed so much. Yeah. Um, you know, the, as like I said, female character, eh, that, that, that needed more development. Could use more development all the way around. And at the same time, I enjoyed it way more than I expected. I, I, I expected a dumber action movie than what I got. Mm. So I, I felt like if I paid matinee for it, I wouldn't have been upset. Yeah, mm. And I wouldn't call it dumb. I just think it was kind of mishandled by the director. Uh, only because I, I don't think he really realized what he had there and what he should have cut out, which would have been the whole the whole romantic angle. That girl, sure. there was no purpose for in the movie. Uh, they could have cut out a big chunk of that middle part with the whole cat and chase thing that just kept going on and going on and going on. And you you're you're constantly thrown in different countries, and after a while you 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 start to forget who's on whose team and who's working with who and, what, and for what what for what and why reasons. Um, but yeah, the only thing that really stuck out to me in this was the chemistry between De Niro and Statham, which I actually enjoyed. But it's unfortunate that there's only about not even five minutes of it, if that. Um, but other than that, I mean, I was I was kind of I was kind of uh, I, mean, I was I was kind of bored by Jason Statham's performance, and that's and that's not saying it was his fault. I think it was a fault of the script and of the director not really knowing how to really like pull something else out of him besides his typical shit that he does. So it, it's nothing but a pure rental for me, uh, uh, and that's it. So yeah, I, you know, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. This story might have been crazy from the very beginning. Even the government is looking at this book and saying, this is bullshit. <laughs> it's, a con- it's a controversial book, which means like, yeah. come on, this shit didn't happen. Like that. Yeah. The, 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 the movie ends with the, the, right before the credits. They just yeah. come out and tell you like, yeah, the government says this book is bullshit. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah at the end of the movie, they tell you that. Like the, the feather man, yeah, because this yeah. story is about as light as a feather. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. They, they should have said it at the end, too. It's like right after that. Like, if you didn't like the movie, that's why. <laughs> and I can see why, too, because if the movie is like the book, mm-hmm. The book that's based on you know a so-called true story, like they cannot prove anything apparently from, from this yeah. story. But if it is what this guy is saying, I I can't buy it because this team is going after you know the SAS the. Uh, I, what are they called? The uh, the C, is it the, the special the special air, air, service? air service? Okay, I was about to say secret air service, but mm-hmm. apparently ain't nothing secret about them because no. you think in Jason Statham when they have to track these guys down because now you got to keep in mind they have to go in and record these guys saying that they killed these people. So instead of like busting down a door with a camera, you know, like Jason Statham would do a crashing through a window or just catching this guy on the street and just pull him into an alley and beating the shit out of him, they call these people up and just say out of the blue, hey. We're shooting a documentary. Can we come over? <laughs> can we come over to your house and yeah. and film you and the guys who are in the, you know in the in the special air service? Are like, yeah, sure. Come on over. You want to make a documentary about me? And, I'll, and so I can just blab all my secrets to the world. Hey, man. Yeah. Yeah. Big, big Brother is huge in England. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit, I'm gonna be a right? Big Brother. 
<laughs> hey, hey do, do you know Simon Cow? Yeah. <laughs> this guy is good. You have no idea. 